This is Crash Course in Enterprise Java Beans 3 with Rational Obligation Developer for WebSphere, Part 3 of 9, Writing the Java Bean. Now that we've established our Enterprise Java Beans project, we will naturally create the Java Bean itself. The EJB module folder is the source folder for our Enterprise Java Bean. If you expand that, you'll see a meta inf folder, which has already been created for us. This contains some information that the application server can use regarding our Enterprise Java Bean. For now, leave that alone. And first we'll want to right-click the Enterprise Java Bean module folder, highlight New, and click Interface. Now what we're going to do is create two interfaces for our Enterprise Java Bean, a local interface and a remote interface. The first interface is the local view counter. I'm going to put this inside the com.ibm.developerworks.ejb3 crash course dot view counter package. You may want to change the package name, but it's good to leave the dot view counter on the end to separate this as part of the view counter. Later we'll be creating a couple other submodules like that. Everything else is fine, and click Finish. Now we'll start off by labeling this as the local view for the Enterprise Java Bean. We use the annotation. So you type at sign and local. You see the red squiggly. If you highlight your mouse over that, um, Eclipse will show quick fixes, and click the first one which imports local from the javax.ejb package. Now that we've declared this as the local interface to the Enterprise Java Bean, we fill in the methods that we want our local interface to have. I'm going to create two methods, an increment method and a get value method. The increment method increments the the local count or the uh, view count of the page, and it takes one parameter, the page ID, so that our sample blog may have multiple pages, and you can separate them by providing different page IDs to the bean. It returns an int, which is the count after incrementing. Also, this get value method returns the view count of a page without incrementing. And that's it for our local interface. Now right click that same package and then click new interface and we'll create our remote view counter interface. The package has already been filled in for us because we created this new interface from the package rather than right clicking the project or the source folder. Everything else is fine again and just click finish. And this time, you may be able to guess it, but we'll use the annotation remote. Again, we want to do the quick fix of import remote from javax.ejb. And this interface will have the exact same methods. All right. Increment with page ID. And get value also with page ID. These methods provide the same functionality. And in fact, in our case, our Enterprise Java Bean will implement both of these interfaces at the same time. And now that we've created both the local and remote interfaces, we want to create the bean itself. I click the same package, click New, and then Class. Again, our package name has been filled in because we created a new class from the package rather than from the source folder. We want our class name to be view counter bean because this will be the Java bean that handles the view counter. You can choose to implement interfaces from here, which we can do right now. If you search for local view counter, there's one. Add that. And then remote view counter. Hit add. Or, of course, you can add them yourself from the source code. Now, 
Now, a little trick, I'm going to double click this title button right here just to maximize this window so that we can see more of the source code. So now we have our view counter bean class and you'll see that since I used the generation technique, both of these interfaces have already been implemented for us. Now the first step is to declare this a stateless counter bean, stateless Java bean. And again, hold your mouse over the word stateless and select the first quick fix, which is to import the stateless class from the javax.egb package. Now we're actually at a stopping point for this Java bean. The rest of the Java bean will require knowledge of the Java persistence API, which will be taught in the next section. And then we'll come back to the Java bean later and fill in these methods using the Java persistence API to retrieve these values from the database and save them back into the database. So continue on to the next section.